Here I've got a chunk of red oak. Um, it's about 10 inches across this way and maybe 20, 24 inches high, 22 inches high, something like that. Uh, it's ideal for splitting apart to make the pieces for my joint stools. And when I did that video last year showing that process, I had already gone past this step. So I'm backing up to show how I split out the parts. What I'm headed towards are two by two, two inch by two inch pieces for the legs of the stool, the styles, by two feet long. And then whatever doesn't become those will become the framing parts. Here I have the lower rails called the stretchers. And they, are, they range between an inch and three quarters high to two and a half inches or so by a, an inch, inch and a quarter. This one is, will be a top rail. It's too wide, probably. It's four and a half inches, I think. But I'll, I'll split them around there, around four inches, three and a half inches by a thick inch. Again, this is heavy. Um, but you see the the way this one grew, it's just so nice and straight. It's just ideal for this work. So I'll show you how I sort of lay it out and then start to split it apart. What I'll do is I'll draw right on it. And maybe you can see here that is the here's all the heartwood of the oak and that's the sapwood it's a very narrow band of sapwood it's not even three quarters of an inch so there's not much waste out there and i'll make a line just under that sapwood this one kind of arcs around a bit and because I want to finish with these at two inches, I'll split them uh, a good bit thicker than that, up to maybe two and a half. This one will split pretty well. But I'll go ahead and, and just lay out two pieces there at that uh, dimension. One, two. And that's right about, it's a little heavier on that half than on this half. Uh, but that'll, that'll work out fine. Uh, what I forgot to talk about is that uh, the reason I'm going to split this up into joint stools is there's a nice wide section here that's nine inches wide. And that could be panels for chests and things. But it has a little bit of twist to it. Not a great deal. It's, it's, you could work with it. But uh, I, I'm more in need of parts for joint stools right now. If I were to split this for panels, my first split would be to break it in half there. And then break those halves. This side is getting narrower. You can see as well, maybe... Um, this was an offcut of a log, and that section where it broke off at some point, uh, that's certainly trash. So I think what I'll do before I go any further is uh, split that off. Something a little under that. And I'll just use a wedge to split that right in the growth ring plane. And another one here. So, there's still just one piece of that hanging on. Um, I'm 
now I can split this I think straight across let me see how thin it will get over here it's still over two inches so I'm going to just make a split right across there and to do that I'll score it with the wedge just tap that move it over tap it again move it over and that will start that crack. crack. You can see the split running down there. At this stage, I can't really control that split like you can on thinner stuff with the fro. So that's the first split. And now, this in a perfect world will give me four legs to a stool. So I'll split it in half and then try to split those halves in half again. And these are small enough to mention I don't need to score it. There you can see that sapwood very clearly. So this is what I'm keeping, that goes in the fire. And I think I'll take those over and split them at the riving break next. So I'll do that with the fro. So this step is just to remove the bulk of the sapwood and the bark with the fro. This heartwood is what I'm keeping. So I'm going to lay the fro right inside that uh, division between the heartwood and sapwood and split this off. Now different woods respond differently and what this red oak will do is it will run down here and just break off right across that sapwood and then I'll come in from the other end and do the same thing. Sometimes with a white oak you can get it to run right down that division and knock the whole thing off. But that almost never happens in, um, in red oak. So, as I'm about to show you, just take the fro and lay it right on there. And you can see right away that that just breaks that way. And I'll put it in this riving break here and just, there isn't a lot that you can do about it. So just uh, came out, break that off as best you can. And <laughs> I can't get out of my own way and the camera. I don't usually work on this side of it, doing this for the camera. And, uh, so I'm all out of my habit. And you can see again the way that's going to break like that and just catch it in there twist that off so that's firewood and this is what i'll um 
take off with the hewing axe. Now the last step out here is to hew off that sapwood and bark with this axe and then I can take the piece in the shop and work it at the bench with the planes. So this is a hewing hatchet or a broad hatchet. It's got a single bevel. The back isn't technically flat, slightly dished this way and it's for really creating a flat surface. Uh, so I'll show you how I use that. Hewing this sapwood off is just a couple of quick steps. The first one of which is um, to take the hatchet about the middle of the handle, not way down at the end, and tilt the style over, in this case to my left, and just sort of almost drop the hatchet into that material, and then bring the piece more upright to break those off. So it's a matter of scoring it here and then breaking those chunks off there that you're cutting down to and then flipping it end for end to get that. Let me uh, spin around you can see that angle. This one is uh, split so close to the size that I'm even leaving a little sapwood to take it with the plane and not have to go any, uh, any further than necessary. And I can see I've got a sweep there. You know, it's much wider here than here. So I can uh, take some of that as well. The same method. rectifies that. So the bark can carry dirt and grit that can damage your the edge on the hatchet. So sometimes I'll use a different hatchet to get through that and use this one for finishing it up. But one way you can kind of get around that is to come in above the outer bark and try to split it off. So here I'm really chopping through from this side here. Like that. Now that's nice and clean. And less damaging to the hatchet. I'm going to talk a minute just about the orientation, the way I'm going to split this. And it doesn't quite show up, but you remember I split the middle off. The bark was way out here, so the growth rings are running this way. And what I want is this board to split like that, so that that's the bark side and then what we're looking at is the radial plane and there'll be very little shrinkage across this dimension and that's what will help keep this flat. If I split them the other way, this way, the boards would cup as they pride and these won't really. This one could be another two inch by two inch style or I can split it in half this way and make the aprons out of it and um, that's what I'm going to try to do because it is three inches wide three and a half inches wide across here 
uh, which is often what I make the aprons. So it's thicker than it needs to be. Uh, I'll, I'll get two long sections out of it. Um, so just to review, the growth rings are running this way and the radial plane this way. And that's what I want, is that radial plane to be the face of these boards. And I need some that are about 15 inches long and some that are 10 inches long. So I should get a long and a short times two out of this. And I'll just eyeball the fro right in the middle and just tap it to start that split. And see the piece of wood gets a little thick down there and this section is running very true so it's pretty good there as well but I'm gonna put the thick side down here like that and I'm pushing down on this part as I twist that handle but I'm not slamming that handle I'm just slowly moving it and now this piece is getting a little thinner so I just reverse that process and now apply the pressure this way like that. and what that did you can see right there it was starting to come down and it went back the way I wanted it so there's two longs and two shorts of these aprons. Thicker than I need, but easily enough uh, thinned down. I'll plane that surface first and then gild it. 